A jam-packed concert is about to start, but the country singer superstar Zane Gunther is nowhere to be found. Billy, his brother, and the agent panicked backstage, looking for him. Zane was at his suite singing a Christmas song as if no one was waiting for him on stage. Billy was calling him, but he never picked up his phone. From his room, he could hear the screams of his fans dying to witness his performance. However, the singer seemed burned out from the limelight and was reluctant to perform. Meanwhile, Billy rushed to the dressing, furious about what had taken the man so long to be on stage. He opened the room, but no Zane was there. Little did he know, Zane brought his guitar and escaped the hotel through the back door. It's the Christmas season, and Jeanette was hired to stage a home. It is for sale, so the owner requested to decorate it to attract buyers. Jeanette will soon graduate in interior design but has already worked for an agency that decorates homes. She is a single mom to her only child, Quinn, and her main job pay will not be enough for a living. During the day, she would do side hustles and study at night to finish her degree. Quinn was with her when they went to the house. The owner was not there since it was only a second home. The house was spacious and beautiful, and Quinn wished they could also live there. The little girl was too amused that she accidentally pushed a vase. Quinn apologized, seeing her mom's reaction. Jeanette, on the other hand, blamed herself for putting it there. She thought of finding a similar one from her mother's gallery. In the same town, Officer Patty was chilling while drinking a cup of coffee. While on duty, she opened the radio and tuned into a radio segment featuring Zane Gunther's fans. The interviewed girls were screaming as they waited for Zane to perform. Like them, Patty is also a diehard fan of the country singer, even if she has never met him. She wondered what it felt like to buy a ticket to his concerts. Her fangirling moment was interrupted when an overspeeding blue car passed by her. Patty followed it and pulled over the driver. She lectured the man for reckless driving in the snowy weather. Patty read his license and jumped out of amusement because it was Zane. Her serious tone became sweet while talking to him. Zane, on the other hand, remained calm after an officer pulled him over. He was hoping that the woman won't recognize him. Unfortunately, she did. The superstar went to the town to be out of the public's attention, so he pleaded with the officer to keep it a secret they met. Patty was game to grant her idol's request. Instead of issuing a ticket, the lady gave him paper and a pen for an autograph. She also took a photo with Zane, kissing him. Before they parted ways, Patty reminded him to slow down. Meanwhile, Jeanette, with her daughter, arrived at her mother's place. Susan was with Charlie, who often visits her gallery. Jeanette told her mom about the vase and asked if she had a similar one. Fortunately, she has some stocks in the basement. Jeanette left Quinn there because she would be busy for the whole day. Quinn doesn't mind staying with her grandma, because she is fun and game to do everything to keep her entertained. On that day, they will be spending their time painting which the little girl loves so much. Jeanette returned to the house she was staging. She already got the vase as a replacement and put it in place before the owner arrived. Jeanette freaked out, hearing a man's voice behind her. He was topless, and it made her feel awkward. The man was Zane, but Jeanette never recognized him. The lady introduced herself as the interior designer of his house. Zane congratulated her for a fantastic job but made fun of her for talking to a vase. Instead of laughing at the joke, Jeanette was tense. She was concerned if the vase had sentimental value. For peace of mind, she admitted to breaking the other vase and told the man she had replaced it. Surprisingly, Zane was calm even if the vase was his father's gift to his mom on their wedding day. Jeanette couldn't say a word out of fear. Zane laughed because he was only kidding. Jeanette did not find it funny and got mad about it. Zane apologized, but the lady never listened. She bid goodbye and drove away. Zane leaving his sold-out concert was all over the news. The media thought the year was not good for him. He lost his father to cancer. Also, his supermodel fiancé broke up their engagement and revealed having an affair with a director-producer. But the latest among all is his new album, which received mixed reviews and criticisms. Jeanette arrived at the coffee shop she works twice a week. She apologized to her boss, Cindy, for being late. Cindy has been watching the news about Zane and told Jeanette about it. However, the lady was not interested in showbiz updates since she was too busy in life. Suddenly, one of the customers bumped her intentionally to be noticed. He is Tom, a persistent admirer of Jeanette. He would always go to the coffee shop to see the lady during her shift. Jeanette is never attracted to him, so she keeps turning him down. She is also too busy working and has no time to date anyone. Despite that, Tom invited her again to go out after her shift. Jeanette explained she needed to pick up Quinn, work on her other job, and then study at night. Billy was having a snack in his car when the music executive called. Mary was furious that Zane had disappeared. She was also pissed off with the recent media release about the issue. Among all her talents, Zane was the one earning a lot for her agency. She threatened Billy to bring back Zane, or he will lose his job as an agent. After a long tiring day, Jeanette went to her mom's place to see Quinn. She found her sleeping soundly on the couch. She fixed the blanket to keep Quinn warm and kissed her forehead after. Susan asked how her day went. The lady told her how the homeowner caught her replacing the broken vase and made fun of her talking to it. 
Jeanette never forgot Zane was topless earlier, so she also shared about Zane's six-pack abs. Susan laughed at her imagining the scene. She felt bad for her daughter working day and night for her dreams. She told her to take a break once in a while and thought it was time to date another guy and be happy. Jeanette disagreed because going out to seek the right man was not her priority. She has a lot of things to do for Quinn's future. Jeanette doesn't need a man because being with her daughter makes her complete. After that, Jeanette studied the whole night like how she used to. The next day, Jeanette was rushing to go to work when Marco from her job agency called her. Zane already cancelled the staging service without disclosing the reason. Jeanette was dismayed, considering her hard work from the day she started decorating it. Marco apologized to the lady. He cheered her up, saying she could use the cancelled job as a different experience on her CV. Jeanette was sure it was the vase she broke that made Zane refuse the service. Jeanette finds it unreasonable because she needs a job for the Christmas season. Zane visited his good friend, Jolene, the woman who molded his singing career. Zane was a shy little boy, terrified to perform on stage. Good thing he enrolled at the music camp Jolene used to manage. Jolene was busy preparing for the annual Christmas show she organized when Zane came. She was delighted to see him again after many years. She thought it would be a great time for the man to break his busy schedule. Zane feels sorry to hear that the camp needs to be closed. Jolene, on the other hand, said her condolences to the superstar who recently lost his father. She also guessed that Zane might be brokenhearted, which is why he returned to the town. Zane smiled but denied it. He already accepted that they are not meant for each other. The singer was only dismayed that he was not allowed to broadcast live singing in his shows, after an insurance company advised him only to do lip syncs. Because of this, Zane was burned out from pursuing his career. In the meantime, he wants to clear up his mind as he enjoys his stay in the town, without Billy and his agency knowing. Jeanette passed by Jolene's place when she saw Zane's blue car. She stopped by and looked for him around. Jeanette found Zane with Jolene and learned they were long-time friends. The two were also surprised to see Jeanette angry. She confronted the man for firing her just because of the vase. Jeanette was even more upset that he only cancelled through the phone with such a rush, without considering the hard work she poured into the project. Zane clarified he never called the agency to fire her. He even liked the new vase she replaced last time, which has nothing to do with her accusation. Zane also decided to take the house to the market, and maybe the real estate agent was the one who cancelled the staging service. Jeanette felt awkward and apologized. She also returned the keys out of embarrassment. Zane giggled, seeing her reaction, and told the lady he was not a horrible person like what she thinks of. Jolene only laughed at them. She never took sides since she was a good friend of the two. Jolene even teased them after learning Jeanette saw Zane without a shirt. She also assured Jeanette that the superstar was a good man. Since Jeanette had no job, she offered to decorate the camp for the upcoming Christmas concert. The lady freaked out. Zane is Gunther, the famous country singer. She felt more embarrassed and walked away. Jeanette went to Zane's place to get her things. She told her mom she got fired but got another job. Jeanette dropped the call seeing Zane smiling at her. He feels sorry for learning she was fired from the job, and he wants to compensate by inviting her to dinner. Jeanette was tense talking to him again, knowing he was Zane Gunther. She wondered if the dinner is a date. Zane nodded yes and asked her if she was single. Jeanette never denied it but frankly told the man that dating was not her priority. Meanwhile, Billy failed to find Zane in Florida and California, so he decided to go to the town where the superstar enrolled in a music camp. He happened to meet an old friend who owned a cafe. Billy asked if he saw Zane in the vicinity. However, the man was not convinced that a famous singer would be roaming around in their small town. The next day, Jeanette started her day early to work at the camp. She brought cups of coffee for everyone. Jolene was delighted to see her. She introduced the lady to Monica, who also works to decorate the stage. The coffee lover Monica immediately fell in love with Jeanette for her sweet gesture. The lady also recognized her as the woman who works at the coffee shop in town. Suddenly, a man who wears shades, a cap, and a jacket arrives. It was Zane covering himself, never to be noticed. He waved to the ladies, making Jeanette awkward. Jolene told her Zane came to help out. Jeanette's mood changes because she doesn't like his presence. She hates him for no reason, but she has no choice but to pretend everything is fine. Zane looked at Jeanette and greeted the lady. Jeanette never offered the man a coffee, so Jolene took a cup for him. She also instructed her on what to do on the stage and left the two after. The atmosphere went awkward. Zane breaks the silence by saying he doesn't want to intervene with Jeanette on her ideas, but promises to help her. After hours of working, the two got along well and talked about random things. Zane wondered why Jeanette was different from the girls he had met. It's been three days, but she never even cared to ask questions about his clothes or the song he profited the most. Because of that, Zane got curious about her life. All he knew is she was an amazing mom to Quinn and worked at different jobs. Jeanette shared about something in her life Zane doesn't know about. One of them is finishing her interior design degree next year. She also likes music, except for Zane's songs. After that, Jeanette turned serious and shared how she and Quinn decided to live in town. When Quinn was a baby, Jeanette moved into her mom's. Jolene became her first friend in town. Since her children are older than Quinn, Jeanette would often ask her random stuff in raising a child. 
One of them was when Quinn had her first tooth, where she could not sleep for three consecutive days. Jolene recommended she listen to a song to keep her strong and motivated. Zane was surprised when the lady recited the song. It was his old composition he did 10 years ago in town. He never knew someone had heard it. Jeanette was also surprised it was him because she had never liked country music. Their talk was interrupted when Quinn arrived with Susan. The little girl was so delighted to see her mom. Zane finds her adorable and greets her. Susan, on the other hand, was amazed at talking to the guy with abs that Jeanette was referring to. The woman bid goodbye after because she needs to go to the gallery and meet local artists. Jolene approached Quinn and told the little girl her mom would be working late, but they could play together while waiting. Quinn got so excited, so she suggested playing in the park. However, it was snowing, and Jolene was reluctant. Fortunately, Zane volunteered to go out with the kid. Jeanette felt shy to permit them, but she did after seeing Quinn extremely excited. In the park, curious Quinn throws questions to Zane. She wondered why Zane never stayed in the big house. The superstar laughed and told the kid he only bought it for his brother. However, he preferred staying in the city, so the house was not unoccupied for years. Quinn was delighted that Zane owned the blue car because it was her favorite color. Zane also shared he is single and waiting for the right girl. Quinn shipped her mom to him. Her dad had already passed away, so they moved into her grandma's place. After playing in the park, the two returned to the camp and cut papers for the superhero mask. There, Quinn suggested Zane have a bigger Christmas tree to receive bigger gifts from Santa. The little girl doesn't own a big one, so she only received a few. She also noticed that Santa couldn't give her everything she wanted, especially the expensive ones. Last year, she requested a game system, but he only sent a pair of gloves to her. Zane felt bad for Quinn after hearing it. He can relate because his father's salary back then was only enough to buy food. He cheered up the girl saying Santa's elves may have a tough time making electronics, so they failed to send her one. Zane also wore the gloves, and it made Quinn giggle. They played superheroes around the room, where Quinn was the supergirl, and Zane was her sidekick. Jeanette was happy to see them having fun. She picked up Quinn to go home for dinner, but the little girl refused. She liked spending time with Zane and requested her mom to let him join her for dinner. Jeanette explained to Quinn that Zane also had other plans for the night. Deep inside, she felt embarrassed for letting a superstar watch her daughter. Zane confirmed he would be going out and invited them to come. He will be going to the Circle Theater to watch a movie. Quinn got so excited and convinced her mom to say yes. Jeanette was reluctant, so Zane said she didn't need to worry because it was a non-date. In the end, Jeanette agrees to make Quinn happy. Meanwhile, Mary was becoming even more desperate to find Zane as days passed. She told the press they already have Zane. But after the call, she screamed in her office to find Zane as soon as possible. Jeanette and Quinn met Zane at the movie theater. They wondered where the other people went. Zane booked the place for them. Quinn got so excited and chose the seat she wanted. She also saw popcorn and asked permission from her mom to get one. The three were seated on the chairs like a family. Quinn was in the middle while Zane and Jeanette sat by her side. They looked great as couples, bumping each other's hands while eating popcorn. The two seemed to like touching each other but never admitted it. Jeanette's heart was full seeing her daughter enjoying the night. She also noticed how Quinn was comfortable with Zane. She even rests her head on him whenever she's frightened. After the movie, Quinn expressed how grateful she was to Zane. Jeanette also asked permission to leave. Zane stopped them, because there was still another thing he wanted to do before leaving the theater. Zane took out the controls of the game system he bought for Quinn. The little girl was overjoyed and almost thought he was only joking. Zane let her play with it for another two hours before they leave. He also told her she could bring it home and play anytime she wanted. Jeanette confronted Zane on the reason behind splashing his money on them. She made it clear she didn't want to date him. Zane explained he likes going to movie theaters but cannot be seen by anyone at the moment. Because of that, he decided to reserve the whole venue only for them. About the expensive game system he bought, he doesn't intend to make Jeanette feel bad for not affording what her daughter wants. Because he knows how hard it is to wake up at dawn without a gift on Christmas Day. He is also aware that Jeanette worked day and night to buy a pair of gloves for her daughter, and he admires her for that. Jeanette was touched that someone recognized her hard work for Quinn. After that, she agreed to let Quinn bring the game system home. Zane went back to Quinn to play with her. The three hopped in the car to go home when some people noticed them. They recognized Jeanette, but the guy with her remained a mystery. Tom feels brokenhearted and heads home first from his friends. The next day, Tom went to Cindy's coffee shop but was not as energetic as before. Cindy noticed he acted strangely, so she asked what was wrong. Officer Patty arrived to grab some coffee before her shift. Cindy told the officer about Jeanette dating a mysterious guy. Patty was happy for her but also boasted she bumped into Zane Gunther. She even has photos where she kissed Zane on the cheeks. Tom walked out, hearing the two loudly talking about Zane. Zane, on the other hand, was busy chopping wood when Jeanette arrived. She enjoyed their non-date last time without thanking him. Quinn told her everything, including the things they talked about when she was busy at the camp. Honestly, she hated when Zane gave her daughter things she couldn't afford. 
She was also too busy finding something wrong with it instead of being grateful. Jeanette came by to apologize on that matter. It was fine for Zane, and he appreciated her stopping by his place. Jeanette was not done yet. Saying thank you would not be enough to make her daughter happy. She invited Zane to go out with her and treat him somewhere. Zane refused because he didn't want someone to spend money on him. But Jeanette insisted. She even prepared shades and a cap to keep him hidden around the town. Zane smiled and accepted her invitation. Jeanette brought him to her mom's gallery. They headed to the storage room to get some Christmas decorations. Zane helped her carry the boxes she needed. Their hands would touch each other when they passed the boxes. Zane witnessed how the lady worked hard. He felt bad she was fired from the staging services of his house. It was fine for Jeanette, and she told the man to hire her back once she became a famous interior designer. Zane admired her for working two jobs, raising a daughter, and reaching her dreams at the same time. His kind words touched Jeanette. She also realized she was falling for him. However, she must control her feelings because love is not her priority. The two headed to Zane's place to finish decorating his home for Christmas. They were laughing as they finished putting accessories on the tree, and sat down near the fireplace after. Jeanette wondered when Zane would hide in the house. The superstar was also unsure. When he arrived in town, he realized how he missed peace. The little town also became a part of Zane's life. He could not forget when their parents would bring him and Billy to the music summer camp, which was why he fell in love with music. Many people may have wanted to get out of the town to move into the city. They knew they would grab opportunities in a bigger place. Zane already went to different cities and could tell what he was searching for was not there. For Zane, happiness cannot always be found at the intersections of cities. Happiness is about the people, experiences, and moments that don't limit only to big achievements or big days. Happiness can also be in the form of little moments, even by just drinking a cup of coffee every morning while reading a newspaper. It could also be taking a break from a hectic schedule and standing in the forest, feeling the fresh air damping on the skin. Jeanette added that decorating a Christmas tree with a new friend also means happiness. Zane was caught off guard because he thought they were more than friends. The two were about to kiss, but the moment was interrupted by a call. Jeanette picked up the phone, and it was Quinn. Meanwhile, Billy stopped by the town to relax after the long search for Zane. Mary called him and asked for updates. She threatened the man to find Zane as soon as possible because his show would be in three days. If Zane does not appear that day, it would also mean he loses his job. Billy asked for an extension, because he would be heading to their mutual friend's house with the hope he was only hiding there. Mary did not listen and dropped the call. Zane and Jeanette drank wine after the tiring day of decorating the house. They made fun of almost kissing earlier. Zane already knew about Jeanette's husband, who passed away after Quinn told him. Jeanette also never expected it would be too soon for death to part them. She had already moved on, and it was not the reason why she didn't want a date. She aims to reach her dream before being romantically involved with someone. She looked at Zane and asked about the things he wanted to achieve in life. Zane never dreamed of being a singer. He has another dream, but he will only reveal it on their next non-date. He asked the lady if she liked playing guitar. Jeanette is not musically inclined, and she never tried playing one. Hearing that, Zane grabbed his instrument to teach her. Jeanette finds the moment romantic and leans into Zane. The two kissed, but they felt awkward after. Jeanette bid goodbye, so Zane accompanied her outside. They talked on their next non-date, and the lady left later. Little did they know Tom, Jeanette's lover was stalking them. The next day, Billy visited Jolene. He asked her if she happened to bump into Zane. Jolene denied she saw the superstar in the town, because it's almost a year since their last encounter. Billy never believed her, so Jolene gave Zane's contact number. Billy refuses because it's useless, and the man doesn't pick up his call. Jolene continued his act, convincing Billy she never saw Zane. Billy was dismayed by her lying to him because they were also friends back in camp days. He went to the car feeling hopeless about his brother. Not until a man approached him. It was Tom. He offered to guide him to find Zane in exchange for money. After a while, Jeanette arrived at Jolene's and saw Tom with cash. The man boasted he could have more and proceeded to call somebody. He was telling everyone where Zane Gunther could be located. Jeanette panicked and tried to stop him. Meanwhile, Billy has already found Zane. He never thought he would hide in their old house. Zane opened it he took it on the market months ago. The man was almost selling it but was thinking twice because he had good memories of the house and the town. He also apologized to Billy for not picking up his call because he needed time to unwind. It was fine for Billy. He also spoke about how Mary threatened to fire him if he never found Zane. Billy assured the superstar he never looked for him to save his job, but came as a brother. Suddenly, Jeanette's car arrived, rushing. She informed the man about Tom telling the media his location. Soon after that, vehicles of different media networks came. Everything was in chaos as the superstar tried to hide from the cameras. Jeanette was also involved as Zane's rumored girlfriend. The media is uncontrollable, so Billy instructs the two to leave immediately. Zane and Jeanette left the place using the blue car. They arrived at Jeanette's place. The lady left Zane behind after the stressful incident with the media. Zane followed her. He wants to escape from the town and hopes to bring her and Quinn with him. 
His brother has a condo in the city, and they can stay there until the media gets tired of following them. Jeanette finds his idea crazy. She could not just uproot Quinn with such a rush. Zane pleaded and confessed being with her was the most real thing he had felt for a long time. Jeanette told the man if it was only her, she could instantly pack up her things to be with him. However, she is a mom, and she has to think of her daughter first before following her heart. Her life revolves around the town, and she has different responsibilities to accomplish. She was also reluctant, thinking that if she joined Zane, he would prefer someone better than her. Because of that, Zane shared his dream. He doesn't want to be a star because he dreams of living a peaceful life with a family. A family with Jeanette and Quinn. He also promised he would not give up pursuing her. Media released stories after and dragged Jeanette's name into the controversy. They already knew she was a single mom, speculating something was going on between her and Zane. Jeanette turned off the television to stop Quinn from watching it. The little girl was mad at her for making Zane leave. Zane was nice to them, and she already considered him a friend. But her mom ruined everything. Jeanette also looked stressed by the sudden event and instructed Quinn to enter her room. Paparazzi and reporters were outside of their house, and they were looking for her. At the coffee shop, Tom treats his friend with the money he earns. Meanwhile, Patty came to Cindy after hearing the news. She was brokenhearted that she only got the autograph of Zane but not his heart. They were also shocked it was Jeanette he was dating. Since she has no more chance to Zane, he gets interested in his brother, Billy. The final rehearsal for the Christmas concert happened. Jolene was stressed by the lights to the music but was even bothered seeing Jeanette lonely. She could already sense that the lady had mutual feelings for Zane. Jeanette confessed she didn't feel okay after not joining Zane out of town. Jolene cheered her up, saying she was not just a mom but a good mother. It was expected that she would put Quinn's needs above hers. The majority would often choose the easier one, but Jeanette decided a tough decision. Jolene said everything would be fine sooner and comforted her. In the car, Billy informed the superstar about the meet and greet they were heading to. It will also include handshaking with some executives. Zane never responded, thinking about Jeanette. Billy wondered why his brother wanted to continue his career when he was unhappy about it. Zane answered it would be useless to return to the town because Jeanette already gave up on him. Billy felt bad and encouraged the man to take a U-turn to choose the path he truly loves. The Christmas concert finally came. Jeanette was organizing the event, when Jolene came to invite her to sit with Quinn and enjoy the night. Jeanette was delighted to hear that. She also wants to witness the concert from the audience's perspective. On the way, Jeanette bumped into Tom. He already accepted the fact that Jeanette didn't want him. He also told the lady that Zane is a great guy and they are meant for each other. Jeanette thanked him. She also said the man is also a great guy and the right one for him will soon arrive. Soon after Jeanette said that a beautiful lady, Reggie, came to Tom to invite the man to watch the event with her because she had already saved a seat for them. Jeanette hugged her daughter and reconciled after. Jeanette's mom was also with Charlie, the man who frequently visits her gallery. After the first singer performed, the crowd clapped when Jolene went to the stage. She thanked everyone for helping her organize the show. Every year, people kept asking her if she would sing at the concert, but she never did. This time, she announced to sing a Christmas song for everyone with an old friend. The crowd was thrilled seeing Zane on the stage. Quinn and Jeanette were also surprised to see him perform. He grabbed the mic and recited a speech. He confessed that walking away from his previous concert was not because he wanted to unwind. He intentionally ran away to escape it. Fortunately, he met someone that was also the reason why he returned. He went to Jeanette and held her hand. Zane told the lady that after seeing her in the kitchen talking to a vase, he could not stop thinking about her. He doesn't want to force her to be in his world because he wants to be part of hers. To live in this town, start a family with Quinn, and live in peace. Zane looked into her eyes and told the lady how much he loved her. Everyone cheered as the two kissed. Shortly after, Mary called Billy. She insulted him for letting the superstar sing at the Christmas concert of a tiny town. She threatened the agent she had already reached the media, and they were heading to cover Zane's cheapness. However, Billy was not insulted. He dropped the call after resigning from the job to start a music label without her. Mary was furious, feeling embarrassed. Jolene was in the middle of singing when she called Zane to sing with her. The man went to the stage, holding Jeanette and Quinn. Crowd cheers to welcome the superstar who gave up his career for the woman he loves. 